sketching exponentials. So an exponential function is where your power is actually a variable. So something like y equals 2 to the power of x is an exponential. And to sketch the exponential, this one's actually going to look something like this. So, so this one's y equals 2 to the x, and it actually goes through 1 on the y-axis. And if we think about this, to find your y-intercept, all you have to do is make x equal to 0, and if you make x equal to 0 here, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, so that's why it's going through 1. And what's happening over here, because I didn't make them touch, and what's actually happening is the graph is actually getting closer and closer to the axis, but never ever going to touch it. Because if you think about what's happening over here, these are all negative values for x. So if we try like negative 1, 2 to the negative 1 is just a half. So that's why it's under 1, it's a half. Then if you try minus 10, that's just 1 over 2 to the power of 10. So it's a tiny value. And we're getting tinier and tinier and tinier, but never actually equaling 0. But it's getting closer and closer. And obviously it's getting bigger this way because the bigger values we put in for x is making it go really large. If you had y equals 3 to the x, we're going to graph this on the same one. So it looks very similar, it actually goes through 1, but it actually just gets steeper quicker. And why does it go through 1? Well, that's just the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, you make x equal to 0. 3 to the power of 0 is 1, so that's why it also goes through 1 as well. So even if it was a million to the power of x, it would also go through 1. It would just get really steep, really quick. All right, so we're just going to focus on this y equals 2 to the x, and we're going to look at some... Uh, simple graph transformations. So what happens if we have y equals minus 2 to the x? Well, a minus in front of any function just flips it using the x-axis as a mirror. So this one's going to look something like this. So using the x-axis as a mirror, we'd get that, and it'd be going through minus 1 instead of 1, getting closer and closer to the x-axis up here without ever touching it. What about y equals 2 to the minus x? Well, here we've just subbed out x for minus x, and that actually reflects the graph using the y-axis as the mirror, not the x-axis. So instead of doing this, we're going to flip it with the y-axis, so it's going to look something like this. Still going through 1. And what happens if we have y equals minus 2 to the minus x? Well, that's just the function we've just drawn on the left, but but with a minus in front of it, and a minus in front of any function flips it using the x-axis as a mirror. So we've got this exact function using the x-axis as a mirror. We're going to get something like that. So going through minus 1. And here it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis without ever touching it. 